What's going on guys and welcome back. So I am here with my 2022 XCR 850 136 and I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about heavy duty rear torsion springs. So and I know I've been saying this a lot, but if you've been here for a while, you know that me and Bruce, uh, for the most part, immediately go to heavy duty torsion springs in the rears of these sleds. The factory ones just aren't enough, even if you don't weigh a ton. Uh, I think Bruce is only around 180. I was 180 last year and ran them. I'm 190 this year. I'm gaining a little weight, you know, but uh, they are needed. They're just, the, the factory ones are just too soft. So when we put this sled together, uh, a big thing that we were talking about was, <clears throat> Jesse, try it the way it is. We want to test what you guys are getting so we can reiterate to you and help you guys make the best decisions when setting your sled up. So that's what we did. I hear a sled pulling up. I don't know who it is though. Who's there? Skipper himself in Turk. What's up Turk? What are you doing dude? Show him your sweet snowmobile you just rode in on. What do you got out there? You want to show him? Come on, let's go see it. Wow, it got cold out. <whistles> Turk, is that yours? Yeah? Finn, he's letting him borrow it. Right? Oh, it's Finn's. It's your older brother's, huh? Nice. Indy 340. <whistles> Deluxe. Deluxe, sorry. Check it out, boys and girls. You out riding with dad? Nice. You love riding? No. <laughs> hey, Turk. Is that cool, son? Don't show them your muscles. I'll all be scared. Oh! Whoa! Sorry about that. That was uh, our good friend Skipper. Again, if you guys have been here a while, it's the uh, president of Turn Ridge Riders up here on, on Tug Hill. So, super good friend of ours. Lives up the street from from uh, Joey's place and he always comes over to hang out. But anyway, so what I was saying, we are tr we wanted to get the best understanding of what these sleds feel like from factory so we could help you guys out in the best way possible. So my first 200 miles, I had the factory springs or the, you know, the standard duty springs and they weren't horrible, don't get me wrong, but they definitely were, were not up to par, I guess you would say. So, what we have and what we're doing in the shop today, and again, the lighting isn't the best in here. It doesn't actually look bad in the in the camera, but we have our heavy duty torsion springs, and <clears throat> I will have to get the part number because this is only for one of them, I believe. So I'll put the part number up here on the screen. But uh, we're going to be swapping out the heavy or the the standard springs, torsion springs, with the heavy duty ones today. So uh, it's a pretty simple, and don't mind it's dirty. We had to hit a road uh, last night coming up here, but. Or coming home so pretty much what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to pick the back of the sled up and I have the jack that we have up here so I'll be using that but you could do this with anything that you have at home uh, the easiest way to do it is actually pick the track up and put it on something so put it on like a like a four by four six by six and then you know suspend the rear you know the rear of the sled and these are just 15 millimeter bolts the bolt comes from the inside out and uh, you're gonna loosen them up on both sides, you're gonna get them out, you know, which you want, again, if you want it to be, you know, static, so you could just slide those out. Lift the, you know, the, your tunnel of the sled a little bit until that drops out. You gotta loosen these up, which I believe are two 13s. And then uh, down here, you have your retainer pin with a retainer clip. So you gotta pop that out. And then you'll be able to just lift up on the spring and set it down and it'll just slide right off. And you put it all back together, drop the tunnel down onto it and uh, and go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and we're gonna tighten the track up while we're there. I did it already, but it's gotta get done again. Um, these Cobras like to stretch, but uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna change these things over. I'm gonna go riding and then I'm gonna, you know, relay back to you guys how I think it's gonna be. And if you watched the video prior to this, the rear and to, 
to, to my opinion, is just too soft. And I think we're going to have to get into the valving for me to be happy with it. And I think Bruce is going to be in the same ballpark. The center shock, so the front one in the rear skid, to me is just too soft. And I'm just blowing through it and I can feel it in your feet. And again, if you could feel it in your feet when you are entering a bump, that's your center shock or your front track shock. So, but this video is just talking about heavy duty springs. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to uh, get started on this thing and I'll jump you guys in and let show you, you know, some tips and tricks. Okay. So I have it um, just suspended enough that there's a little bit of weight on the back of this track and this bolt, you'll see, just be able to go like this. So I got it already loose already. So I can literally just pop it out. Don't drop it in your track like I just did. And you have, uh, you have your spacer that comes out like that. So that all goes in just like that. We'll go to the other side and do the other side. I've had the fire going in here to defrost this thing. We have heat in here, but I try not to use it. So we got the wood burning stove going. And it is hot, hot, hot in here. Uh -oh. So put that there. And again, just comes right out. See? So now you could go back up here. And again, this is just the setup I have, but we're gonna lift the sled up and that rear suspension should just drop right. If I went the right way, it'd probably help. <laughs> so just like so, we now have uh, free reign to do whatever we need to do. So again, here, we're just gonna loosen these up and take this little torque arm off. And then we're gonna, you know, pop the clip out, <clears throat> pull them out and you know, pull the tension off of them and go from there. So it's really not a hard job, guys. This is super easy. So pro tip that I forgot to tell you guys, put the setting of your torsion springs back to the softest setting or low uh, before we're going to do this. Just going to make it much easier. So you see that this one's already released. I mean, it's literally, let me see if I can do it with, yeah. So you just grab them. I mean, I'm obviously trying to put them back on now. But it's just like that. Just lift up, it comes around, go on that side of the track. Make sure that plastic bushing stays in there. And that's it. And you get them off. You just go ahead and put your new ones on, put it back in, put your clip and your everything back up, and that's it. So I'm gonna wrap this thing up and get it back on the ground and go riding and let you guys know how it is. What's going on guys as you guys can tell i am back in my shop and we have ronda burgundy behind me so you're gonna see the sled in a little bit and don't ignore what the setup that it's on right now that'll be another video but uh this video is 100 about heavy duty torsion springs and 
they are, and you can mark my words for this, they are 110% needed if you are an aggressive rider and in that, I would even go down to 160 pounds up. And then once you, I mean, obviously, once you get even further than that, you're going to need the extra heavy duty. That's probably like 250, 260 on, you need the extra heavy duty. But this sled, and if you guys watched the previous video about my overview of everything, everything in the rear felt extremely soft to me. And these torsion springs 110% changed the entire feel of the sled. It was actually incredible how much of a difference that it actually made. Last year with my VR1, I changed valving and heavy duty springs right off the bat. So I didn't know what the factory springs felt like. This year I did and oh my God. So if you guys are on the fence about doing it, do it. I am 190. Those were only set on setting one. They weren't even set on setting two or one and two or two, two. So they're on the softest setting and unbelievable difference. It just, it even made, <laughs> that front track shock feel better that not by any means did it feel great but it made it feel better and uh it's they're just needed i don't know so Rhonda is sitting here she doesn't have a rear suspension right now she only has a, a bucket but again that'll be a that'll be a later video um how do i explain the heavy duties less weight transfer much less weight transfer to the back. Uh, plant skis better when you're coming through a corner. It it doesn't, again, if you're not transferring the weight to the back, it's gonna keep the skis planted. So it's, it, you're gonna turn better. It's gonna take the big bumps much better. And it's gonna be harder to bottom them out. And again, I can't go into too much detail about suspension, you know, the rear suspension and everything, but you guys, obviously, with it being out, you know what's going on. But I I could put heavy duties on this sled and I could ride it for the season. I'm not going to do that because I like, again, super fine, detail-oriented suspension and setup. But I could 110% put that on and I could ride them. So there is going to be a ton of videos coming about what we do and you know further and further and further with suspension bruce is already working on a bunch of things i'm going to be trying a bunch of things coming up but as for getting you guys out onto the snow right now and enjoying your ride throw in a set of heavy duties again if you're over two, 250 260 throw in a set of extra heavy duties and go ride go enjoy it makes it 10 times more enjoyable when this thing was with the the stock springs in it it was, it was hard, it hurt my feet. It literally was blown right through the bottom of it, right to my feet. And this at least eliminates, I would say half of that, makes it 50% better. So we still have some work to do, but that is, and again, I'll stand by that. And we've, we knew this was coming, but we wanted just to 110% make sure that they were needed before we told you guys that they were. But uh, just like we always said, they're definitely needed. So. If you guys can't find them because they are on back order on Polaris website, give Southside Sales and Service a call. They're in North Adams, Mass. I saw a lot of people not knowing where it is, so I'll do a better job of saying that. They're in Massachusetts, Southside Sales and Service. Give them a shout. They do have a decent amount of them, but they don't have you know millions of them. So uh, call your local dealer, see if they have them. I don't know if you could get them off eBay or anything like that, but uh, just start looking, guys, because they're it's a game changer. It's a 100% game changer. And uh, I can't say more than enough about it. So, um, that's going to do it for this video though, guys. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, put them in, you know, put them in the comments and I will of course get back to you guys. But, uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one.